Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is a A-level further maths tricky question. Uh, shout out to Arjun, my main man, for sending this one in. And this is tricky because it's a vectors question, and everyone finds vectors tricky. Right, I'm going to go through this question and explain it best I can. Uh, if you do find it useful, please do like the video and subscribe if you're not ready. That would be greatly appreciated. Right, let's do it. Okay, we've got a mining company that we're going to be drilling down through the earth. And it says that the ground is modelled by the horizontal plane where Z is equal to zero. Um, Z is the sort of vertical up and down, so it's equal to zero, which means it's just flat along the ground. And it says a mineral layer is modelled as part of the plane containing these three points. Determine an equation for the plane of the mineral layer. Okay, so to, to work out an equation of a plane, you need two non-parallel vectors on that plane. So I'll start by working out A to B, which is, of course, um, uh, B minus A. So that is uh, 15, 30, minus 45, minus 10, 5, minus 50. And that will give us uh, 5, 25, and 5. And because we are only interested in the direction of this vector, we can simplify that by dividing through by a factor. Uh, so I can get 1, 5, 1. Okay, now we need to find another um, vector. So I'm going to do A to C this time, which is C minus A which is minus 5, 20, minus 60, minus uh, A. And that will give me minus 15, and it will give me 15, and it will give me minus 10. Again, I'm only interested in the um, direction of this vector. I'm not interested in the magnitude. So I can just simplify it down by dividing through by 5 here. Um, and I would get um, this. Okay, great. Now I've got two non-parallel vectors on my plane. What I'll need to do now is find a, a perpendicular vector to these two. So using only CP um, techniques, I would do that by writing the first vector dotted with this uh, normal which I'm trying to find and because this normal that I want um, is normal to these vectors their dot products will equal zero. So this will tell me by um, doing the scalar product that 1x plus 5y plus z will equal zero. And it will be the same as well this perpendicular vector which we're creating is also perpendicular to the other vector So I will write that if I dot it with x, y, z, it should equal 0, which gives me minus 3x plus 3y minus 2z equals 0. OK, and the next thing we'll do is we will let one of the um, variables equal 1. And that will give me that x plus 5y plus 1 equals 0. So we can say that that would be equal to minus 1. And we can say that minus 3x plus 3y will equal, uh, minus 2 will equal 0, so we'll equal 2. Now the reason why we do this is we can't solve a free variable um, equation um, simultaneously without free equations. We've only got two here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that at some point this plane will have an e a z coordinate equal to 1. And we're going to fix that and then we're going to work out what the corresponding x and y's will be when z is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward simultaneous equation. So I'm not going to bore you by solving it. I'm just going to tell you what the answers are. We get y is equal to minus 1 over 18. And z is equal to minus 13 over 18. So our normal vector, which we've created, is um, 
sorry, I said Z there. I meant X, of course. We've already set, I meant X. Okay, so minus 13 over 18, minus 1 over 18, and 1. Now, once again, this is just a direction. This is the normal direction. So I'm going to multiply it through by a, um, uh, by a, a constant here to make it a bit neater. I'm going to multiply it through by minus 18. And that will give me 13. It will give me 1. And it will give me um, uh, minus 18. Okay, great. We've got our normal. Um, we've got our normal. Now, just as a little side note here, um, everything that I've done from here to here um, could be done using FP1 methods. If you're learning FP1, then you will learn something called the cross product, and the cross product will get you the um, it will get you the normal straight away, and it's really easy. So I'd recommend learning that even if you don't do FP1. But we'll save that for another day and let's move on to actually writing out this equation of the plane now that I have the normal vector. I'm just going to grab some space. Okay, so the equation of the plane is r dot n is equal to a uh, dot n, where r is x, y, uh, z, and n is the normal vector. A is any point on the plane, so I will use the point A. And N, again, is the normal vector. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so it's asking me just to keep it in R dot N on the left side, so I don't need to expand this out. Uh, but what I do need to do is work out that constant D. So this will give me um, 130 uh, plus 5 and then plus 50 times 180 is uh, 900. So in total that is 1035. Great, so that's the equation of the plane and that is part A done. Uh, part B, it says, uh, determine according to the model the acute angle between the ground and the plane uh, containing the mineral layer. Okay, so we've got the ground, which looks something like that, and then we've got some sort of like mineral layer down here. And we know the normal of the mineral layer. We've worked that out. It's over here. And we also know the normal of the ground like that because um, it's going to be just vertically down because we know the ground is completely flat. So what we need to do is we'll need to um, work out the angle between these two vectors. So um, the first vector um, is the normal of the um, mineral layer and the second vector is the one going directly straight down which is 0, 0 and 1 for the z. And the formula we need to use is that cos theta is equal to a dot b over the modulus of a times the modulus of b. We use this one when we are uh, comparing uh, two planes or two lines. And we use sine if we're comparing a plane and a line. Okay, so let's first, um, uh, let's, uh, let's dot them. So I can write cos theta is equal to um, those two dotted together, which is going to give me 0, 0, and minus 18. And over the modulus of both of them times together. So the modulus of the first one is going to be um, 13 squared plus 1 squared plus 18 squared. And the modulus of the second one is just going to be the square root of, of 1, um, which is just 1. Okay, great. So we've got an expression for cos theta, and then we can um, do cos to the minus 1 and get an, uh, a value for theta. And this gives us 144, um, but the question did specifically say it wanted an acute angle. And when two lines meet, like such, if we get the obtuse angle come out, then the acute angle is just going to be 180 minus that. 
So we'll need to do 180 minus uh, 144, and this will give me 36. So the acute angle is 36. Right, great, that's part B done. Let's move on to part C, and I'm going to grab some more space. Okay, part C asked me to work out the um, the distance that the mining company will need to drill down if it starts from 5.12.0 and reaches the mineral layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is just write this um, equation of a plane in a format I prefer by expanding the scalar product. Um, I'm then going to um, imagine that this is the ground and imagine that I've got a point here on the ground which is 5.12.0 and then we've got our mineral layer down here somewhere and we need to drill directly downwards like that and we're going to hit the mineral layer and that coordinate will be 5.12 and the Z value will change because you're just going directly down you're only changing the Z value so let's call that K and this purple point, which we've just created, is on the plane, so therefore it satisfies our equation of the plane. So I can substitute it in, and I'll get 13 uh, times 5 plus 1 times 12 minus 18 times k is equal to 135. Uh, 13 times 5 plus 1 times 12 is 77. And then rearranging to solve for k, we get k is equal to minus 53.2. So if that's the, um, the, the, the k coordinate or the z coordinate, and it started at 0 and it's gone down to minus 53.2, it must have traveled a distance of 53.2 meters. Great. That is part C done. And then part D is just a classic, what is the assumption of the model? And you've assumed that this plane is completely flat, so there are no bumps. And you've also assumed that it has um, zero thickness as well, both which are assumptions which wouldn't be true in real life. And we're done. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do like the video and please do subscribe to my channel. I'm going to try and do as much further mass content as I possibly can in the lead up to these exams. Um, bye for now.